In 2007, Lieutenant Colonel Artyom Kuznetsov, a 34-year-old officer in the tax crimes unit of the Moscow Interior Ministry, along with a group of Russian officials, police officers and organized criminals, stole $230 million from the Russian people. It was the biggest tax fraud in Russia's history and resulted in the death of Sergei Magnitsky. Lieutenant Colonel Artyom Kuznetsov played a key role in the tax fraud conspiracy and in the death of Sergei Magnitsky. Jameson Farstone is founder and managing partner of the Moscow-based law firm Farstone Duncan and has been acting for clients in Russia since 1993. It all began in 2007 when Lieutenant Colonel Artyom Kuznetsov from the Ministry of Internal Affairs led two raids uh, in Moscow to confiscate the documents of three companies that belonged to Hermitage Fund. Within months of those documents being in the possession of the Ministry of Interior, they were used to change the owner and director of the Hermitage companies to a convicted killer, Viktor Markelov. And then the companies applied for a fraudulent $230 million tax refund, which they received in one day. In October of 2008, my colleague Sergei Magnitsky, who managed the tax and audit department of my Moscow law firm, Firestone Duncan, discovered the fraud. He gave official witness testimony against Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov and his colleague, Major Pavel Karpov. He detailed how they were involved in the theft of the $230 million. Within one month of Sergei testifying against the officers, Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov had Sergei arrested. Once Sergei had been detained, he was refused bail. They held him in prison for a year, and he was subjected to incredible psychological and physical pressure, uh, torture in prison, to retract his testimony against the officers, uh, Kuznetsov and, and, and Karpov, which he refused to do. While Sergei was being tortured and pressured to withdraw his claims, the Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov aided the $230 million theft the Kuznetsov family became rich. According to the records of the Unified State Register of Real Estate Rights, since 2007, the Kuznetsov family has acquired real estate in and around Moscow worth over $3 million. This is all registered to his pensioner parents, who each receive a monthly pension of $180, and who, according to bank records, have a total combined income of $4,500 per month. In 2007, Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov's mother, Lilia Georgovna, became the registered owner of an exclusive 155 square meter condominium in the prestigious new Edelweiss high rise in Moscow. The apartment is just off Kutusovsky Prospect with views over Park Pobedi and has a market price of $1,640,000. Shortly after this, in 2008, the Kuznetsov family acquired another apartment, this time registered to Kuznetsov's father, Konstantin Artyomovich. This 85 square meter condominium is in Moscow's impressive new development, the Capital Constellation Tower. The apartment has a market value of close to $1 million. These two new apartments, registered to Kuznetsov parents, are in addition to the three-room apartment in Moscow that they acquired in 1994 and still own. The Kuznetsov family also acquired land plots in the countryside in the Pushkino village, Noginsky district, just outside Moscow. These three land plots are registered to Kuznetsov's mother. The total market value of the 4,700 square meters of land registered in her name is $198,000. With their combined income, it would take Kuznetsov's parents 52 years to pay for all this real estate or for Kuznetsov, 295 years of his official interior ministry wage. And it wasn't just real estate that they bought. According to the records of Moscow's traffic police, Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov's mother bought the latest model Land Rover Freelander II for $65,000. Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov's wife, Nina, purchased a brand new top-of-the-range Land Rover, which cost $131,000. She also became the owner of a brand new Mercedes-Benz SLK 200 convertible, which cost an additional $81,000. Since the theft of the $230 million, the total value of purchases made by the Kuznetsov family, identified in official records, was over $3 million. Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov 
would have to work for 322 years to be able to afford such an opulent lifestyle. While the Kuznetsov family was acquiring vehicles and properties, Sergei Magnitsky was being abused in prison by Kuznetsov's colleagues. His captors tried to force him to withdraw his testimony about Kuznetsov and Karpov's involvement in the theft and to bully him into a false confession to justify his arrest and detention. When Sergei refused, they tortured him. Sergei kept a, a diary while in prison describing the conditions that he was subjected to. He was put into a cell with eight prisoners, four beds, lights on 24 hours a day, no glass in the windows, and no heat. People had to sleep in shifts. They couldn't sleep, and they were freezing all of the time. Then he was moved from cell to cell, each time losing all his belongings along the way. Then he was put into a cell that was flooded with sewerage, where it was impossible to move unless you were jumping from bed to bed. He was denied access to showers, to clean water. Uh, the, the hygiene conditions were absolutely impossible. And he was consistently refused meetings with his family. He was even refused telephone calls with his children. He sat 11 months in detention and died never hearing the voices of his children again. Sergei's health began to break down. He lost 40 pounds and he was in constant pain. He was diagnosed in prison with pancreatitis and, and gallstones and needing an operation. And he made hundreds of requests for medical care. But the officers involved denied his request for medical care as a means of increasing the pressure on him to change his testimony. From the time of the theft, and while Sergei Magnitsky was slowly dying, Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov was living a very different kind of life. According to border service control records, he traveled the globe in style. He went to Dubai. He celebrated the new year in Cuba and spent three weeks in France. He made three trips to Italy, including a three-week driving tour of the country with his wife. He visited London. He flew to Cyprus by private jet, where he and his wife stayed in the five-star Londa Hotel. Kuznetsov's bill, just for extras, drinks, massages, and pay-per-view, came to 1,240 euros. This bill alone, without the private jet and hotel room, is equivalent to almost two months of his official salary at the Interior Ministry. During this period, while Sergei Magnitsky experienced the confinement of a prison cell, he logged over 450 official complaints. On October the 13th, 2009, Sergei once again made a statement from prison detailing Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov's complicity in the theft of $230 million from the Russian people. He also detailed how his conditions worsened every time he refused to withdraw his testimony against Kuznetsov and his fellow officers. One month later, after being tortured for 11 months and denied all access to medical care, his body finally gave out. On the 16th of November, in excruciating pain and screaming for a doctor, he was put into a straitjacket and locked in a room for one hour and 18 minutes until he was dead. After Sergei Magnitsky died, the Moscow Public Oversight Committee carried out a full investigation into Sergei's death. Panel member Zoya Svetova said this was an intentional death. Andrei Babushkin, another panel member, said that Sergei Magnitsky was murdered to conceal the fraud he had exposed. Sergei stood up to corruption. Sergei stood up to evil. Sergei believed that to make this country a decent place for our children, for ourselves, that we had to fight these things. And Sergei died a hero, and it's time we recognize that. If this war on legal nihilism is to succeed, the government must support the people who fight corruption. The officers responsible for the arrest and death of Sergei Magnitsky must be punished. Instead of being prosecuted, Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov was given a major promotion from the Moscow City Tax Crimes Office to the Federal Department of Economic Security. Three years before Sergei died, the same officers, Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov and Major Karpov, acting with the same convicted killer, Viktor Markelov, were accused of kidnapping Fyodor Mikheyev in 2006 with an attempt to extort $20 million. To cover up their crime, they sent Fyodor Mikheyev to prison for 11 years, where he is to this day. 
They should have been stopped then. Instead, they went on to arrest, torture and kill Sergei Magnitsky to hide their crimes. Crimes that they committed against their own government and the people they were sworn to protect. Unless they are stopped, the same criminal group will continue to steal, murder and cover up their crimes. Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov uses his position to steal and destroy lives. He's become a very rich man and believes his uniform makes him untouchable. It's time to prove him wrong. Russia deserves better.